Joining us at this point of time is Mr. Tathagata Roy, former governor of Meghalaya, to give us his perspective and response to these changes. Uh, sir, appreciate you joining us. Uh, first up, do you think that in uh, premise, the updation of these laws was a great and a good idea? I think it was a good idea because the three principal criminal laws, namely the Criminal Procedure Code, the Indian Penal Code and the Evidence Act, these were all drafted and uh, passed in the British times. Since then, a lot of water has flown down the Ganges and things have changed, particularly regarding the, the, the uh, offense of terrorism. Terrorism was not known in those days. So now it is a very big scourge. So something is something needed to be done and uh, that has been done. So that way it's very satisfactory what has been done. So do you think that terrorism needed to be redefined and widened uh, as has been done in law? Absolutely, absolutely, because uh, there is always a scope of the defense setting up the terrorist side that this is not an act of terrorism, this is an act of democratic uh, protest and blah, blah, blah. In order that such a thing is, can be circumvented, the terrorism needed to be defined. So what is your take on expanding detention in police custody from 15 days to 90 days, three months? I think it's sensible. Uh, 15 days to 90 days, it's, it's sensible. It's, uh, there's nothing wrong. And so, what is your take on sedition being replaced with treason and has a new definition now? That is sensible too, because sedition, as it was defined by the British, had a very specific meaning, and uh, or rather it had a rather a vague meaning. And as a result of that, anybody could be tried for sedition for the smallest of uh, anti-government action. But that way, definition of terrorism and the uh, deletion of sedition is a sensible thing. And do you see this exercise as uh, shedding India's uh, colonial past as well? Yes, of course. You can imagine this uh, Indian Penal Code is, dates back to 1860. The Criminal Procedure Code also it dates back to uh, some date in the 19th century, I don't exactly remember when, and the Evidence Act is up to 1872. So all these are antiquated acts and they needed to be uh, 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 looked at again and uh, modified. That way this, uh, this uh, legislation has done a very comprehensive job. I have only one personal grouse, which I had uh, ventilated before my uh, BJP uh, central leadership, that is for acid attacks on women, something that condemns women to a life of living death. I had, I had recommended for acid attacks on women a mandatory death penalty, or at least a death penalty. That has not been provided for. So, well, what is, what is there is fairly satisfying. And so what is your take on the death penalty uh, issued for mob lynching and a strong stand taken uh, through these laws? No, I said death penalty is a real deterrent. And if a mob which is about to lynch a victim is aware that they can face a death penalty, then that would deter them from uh, taking this action. The state that I live in, West Bengal, is quite notorious for death penalty. I mean, uh, sorry, they're quite notorious for mob lynching. Even an accident uh, by a uh, car driver running down a pedestrian takes the shape of a class struggle over here and results uh, very often on mob lynching of the driver, even though it may not be uh, any kind of fault of the driver. So that way, a uh, death penalty provided for mob lynching is a very sensible thing. It is not uh, mandatory, it is up to the judge to decide it. And so, what is uh, your take on the laws decriminalizing homosexuality and adultery? Well, absolutely sensible. Adultery, in no um, uh, civilized country, adultery is a criminal offense. It is a civil offense. 
Except in the Muslim countries where, of course, the adulterers, particularly the woman, is supposed to be stoned to death. Uh, all of us will agree that that is not a civilized thing to do, however much we decry adultery. So that is quite all right. And homosexuality is a thing in, in which people, uh, people are, uh, they are made by, they are, they are born that way. So how can you blame a person for being homosexual? They are harming no one. So that way it is very sensible, very civilized. So appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for giving us time. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.